For the 21st consecutive season, WBTV Sports 3 presents Football Friday Night. Now, here are Delano Little and Cricket Morton. Hello and welcome to Football Friday Night, Charlotte's best high school football show. And I'm here to tell you, Mayor Pat McCrory can play for our team anytime. He can be our quarterback. He's, got a, he's got a nice little arm there. As long as you can there. still catch it. I can still catch okay. the thing. Hey, I'm Delano Little, joined as always by Cricket Morton, the Duchess of Charlotte Sports. Uh, a lot of big-time matchups well, all around the area tonight. All right, in Rock Hill tonight, the Northwestern Trojans were looking to rebound from last week's loss to Irmo, but they faced a tough test against Marlboro County, who usually has no trouble putting points on the board. So the Trojans would need their A game tonight. Dan Crawford, who always brings his A game, was in Rock Hill and has the story. A patriotic crowd on hand in Rock Hill as the road tripping champion Marlboro County Bulldogs witness the Rockets red glare and an inspired Northwestern Trojan football team. Whose defense was strong, tip drill, C.J. Barber comes down with it, but deep in their own territory. To cap a 98-yard drive, Trojan Jonathan Williams slips into the end zone and says merci to Jean-Michel Marcereau and the rest of the Trojan line. Then with just seconds to go in the first half, Newton finds Rod Brody wide open to tie it at seven. This thriller continued into the second half as Bobo Thompson throws a strike to Barrett Mainers for the go-ahead touchdown. The Marlboro Dogs get scrappy after an interception and are able to get the ball back, march it down the field, but then they must settle for three. And that's all they would get because of some aggressive defense by the likes of Denzel Hinton and this game-saving deflection by James Robinson. Northwestern hangs on 14 to 10. This is Dan Crawford for Football Friday Night. Thanks a lot, Dan. Let's go back to Gaston County where Mark Latham first year lost. But it's going to be a great matchup. He got a lot of interesting matchups on both sides of the ball tonight. You talk about Marlboro County, and you have to start with their quarterback. Savelle Newton uh, is, a, is a great football player. I don't know what else you can say about him. Uh, I know Coach Wallace of Northwestern said he might be the best player who's ever come through and played in here. That's right. Uh, high praise from Coach Wallace. He's the number one or two recruit right now in the state. And the interesting matchup is he's a quarterback. He can throw and he can run. And, of course, the Northwestern defense is solid throughout. They've got seven returning starters. They just are not giving up yards, much less points this year. I mean, they're just awesome. Well, both uh, teams ran into pretty much the same problem a week ago, and that was turnovers. Both teams turned it over four times, and in the final analysis, that's what cost uh, both teams uh, uh, in, in their loss. I think both teams will play better tonight than they did a week ago. I certainly hope so. I mean, the fans have come out. They deserve a great matchup, and hopefully there's going to be some real, real quality ball played here. But I think you're right. Both coaches probably went back to the boards this week and said, look, you know, we've got to cut out the turnovers. We're going to be playing a great team, and the team with the fewest mistakes is probably going to come out of here with the victory tonight. Well, it's really a great test for both teams to see whether Newton can, can stand up against what might be the best defense in the state, to see if Northwestern can stop a quarterback who had more rushing yards than any other quarterback in the country last year, a kid who accounted for 44 touchdowns and who said today he's 99% sure he's going to be going to USC, uh, South Carolina next year. Yeah, and I think what the Trojan defense will probably do, they're going to bring some heat early, but also watch for them to mix some things up. You know, you want to make uh, the quarterback guess, you know, what the coverages are, and then also I think you're going to have a linebacker in there spying at him the whole time, keeping him eye, keeping their eyes on him because he's such a threat to rush. On the other side of the ball, Bobo Thompson, you know, a lot of times he'd come in as the vaulted quarterback, but tonight, you know, all the press is on the other side. Watch for him. He might have a breakout game here tonight. Should be a really good matchup tonight with Marlboro County and Northwestern. Stay tuned. The kickoff is just seconds away. Kevin Miller moves on the football. And the ball into the end zone. Northwestern will take it at the 20. And there's some shoving going on after the play down on the field. And we're going to have to deal with uh, an air horn up here, I'm afraid, for most of the night. So Northwestern will get it at the 20. 
And Bobo Thompson will be the quarterback. Dante Walker will be the tailback. Walker's rushed for 180 yards in Northwestern's first two games. Jonathan Williams will be the fullback when they run from the eye. Carlin Long and Brandon Pay, the wide receivers, will also see Stephen Burris and Sean Barnett as wideouts, depending on the set. And they will come out with one wideout and run from the eye. First down, and it's Dante Walker hit at the line of scrimmage and stopped. And it looked like Deion Douglas, a defensive tackle, making the play for the Bulldogs. Good penetration by the Bulldogs. Walker, no room that time. Defensively, Eric Oliver and Devin Douglas are the ends. Deion Douglas, Devin's twin brother, and Bernard Blue, the tackles, and Hawk Grooms is the nose guard and will set the uh, rest of the defense for you after this play. Thompson runs the option. Late pitch, Walker, and he's hit after a gain of just one. It'll be third and long as Ricardo Patterson makes the play for the Bulldogs. Their linebackers are Melvin Simmons and Jermaine Stanton. The corners are Patterson and Byron Davis. Levander McRae and Rakees Williams are the safeties. That was your all-star quarterback making that tackle. Seville Newton at free safety that time came up, played the option well. Well, Newton does start at free safety for him, not uh, what we had. But it's third and eight, Northwestern at the 22. Thompson trying to get to the wide side of the field. Bobo breaks a tackle, is tackled short of the sticks at about the 29. Fast defense from Marlboro County. That's the first thing you notice. All three of the plays, good penetration, good speed. They strung uh, the option out well the first time it was run. And Thompson was really on the run from the go on that one. Fourth and one. And Jimmy Mainers will have to kick it for Northwestern. Javel Bostic is back deep for Marlboro County. And Mainers kicks it out of there. Bostic at his 38. And has maybe a five-yard return before the defense gets there. Good coverage by Northwestern that time. Four or five uh, Trojans around the ball to make the tackle. Before we get our first look at the Marlboro County offense, let's pause for this. We'll be back, still scoreless, early in the first. Shut out in the second half. Savelle Newton gives the ball to Bernard. Galloway is running back, and Galloway has a couple of yards as he crosses the 45 to about the 46. Galloway averages over 100 yards a game from the tailback spot, gets two yards on Marlboro County's first play. Second down at the Bulldog 46. Melvin Simmons will be the fullback when they run the two-back set. Levander McCray and Darnell McLaughlin, the wideouts. Eric Oliver is the tight end. They run a one-back set with four wide receivers, second and eight. Newton swings the ball out. And out across the 50-yard line is Bernard Galloway. Denzel Hinton did a good job. He, uh, he played it well, just didn't come through and uh, execute on the tackle. Also there for the Trojans, number 20, James Robinson. It's at the Northwestern 48, and it's third and two. Six-yard gain as Newton's first pass is a swing. It gains six to Galloway. Here's the quarterback sneak. Newton trying to bounce it to the outside. And at 6'2 and about 208 pounds, he is strong enough to get away from the first contact and pick up a first down near the 46-yard line of Northwestern. Tough break that time. Colby Good had great penetration for the Trojans and initially knocked Newton backwards, but he was able to shake that off and make that corner for the first down. Four-yard gain. Newton, just a great runner. More yards rushing than any other high school quarterback in America last year. Moose compared him to Derek Ross, former Northwestern quarterback. From the shotgun, it is the keeper. 
Newton. Can't get away from the pursuit. He will lose a couple. Denzel Hinton in on the tackle for Northwestern. Still impressive, though. He should have been dropped for a five-yard loss. He shook off a couple of waves of Trojans before he was finally brought down. Paul Lyons, defensive end. Colby Good and Chris Mitten are the tackles. Josh Beasley, the nose guard. Denzel Hinton, Juwan Marshall, the linebackers, along with Jason Robinson, who alternates with Chris Reed, Omar Craig, Jamie Robinson, C.J. Barber, Jonathan Finley in the secondary. And Newton's pass out into the flat is caught at about the 42. And down to about the Northwestern 39. Going to be short of the sticks. And those uh, Marlboro County numbers are going to be kind of tough for us, I think, all night. They certainly are. It's a light yellow on a white with just a little bit of black trim and very hard to pick up. Making that catch was King Vega. Gets to the Northwestern 39 for a gain of seven. It's third and five. Four wideouts this time, two to each side out of the shotgun. Long count. Newton will throw it. Throws to the flat. It is juggled and caught. And it'll be a first down at about the 31. And it was Lindale McCall making the catch for Marlboro County. And keep an eye on that. Uh, one interesting matchup. Northwestern, a little young on the corners. Two 10th graders start. Number four, Omar Craig. Number 20, James Robinson. What you saw there, Marlboro County stretched them out, had them in man coverage with those four wideouts. Newton is three for three for 20 yards and a first down at the Northwestern 32. Newton to throw again. Steps up, deep sideline, and it's broken up and intercepted. And it's C.J. Barber with the interception. He stepped out of bounds on about the two. So C.J. Barber gets the pick, and Northwestern will have it, but inside the five. And Newton that time would have been uh, better off if he'd thrown that one away. There was good coverage from the start. The penetration started to break down the pass protection, and he just threw that one up for grabs. They're going to mark it at the two. So the offense is backed up, but they do get the offense on the field. And we'll see if Northwestern can power it out to get some room. Run from the eye. Dante Walker, and Walker with a good gain on first down. He drives for a first down. He's up to about the 15. Nice hole opened up by the offensive line, cutting back against to the weak side. He almost broke that one for a long game. He got about 13 yards. Uh, up front for Northwestern, left tackle Gary Blevins, left guard Ben Bryant, center is Trey Hernandez, right guard Matt Garner, right tackle is Rob Dubard. So a good run by Dante Walker to give him a little room. 13 yards to the Northwestern 15. And here's Jonathan Williams for no game. Jeff, almost impossible to pick up the uh, Marlboro County numbers there. Well, I would say Eric Oliver, but that would be my best guess. 43. I don't know whose phone that is. <laughs> we have all sorts of noise going on up here. It is second down to nine at the 16. Thompson keeps, reverses his field, looking for a seam, and spins his way across the 25, has a first down. Good decision. Nice reverse pivot by Bobo. Yeah, nothing going in the direction of the play. He just reversed on that and uh, picked up a nice game. It's a 10-yard run, and Northwestern will pick up the sticks at the 26. Folks watching at home, Marlboro County, really, uh, fans are really bringing it on. They brought their own fireworks tonight, so really kind of putting it in the face of the Trojans, I think a little extra incentive there from the get-go. Kind of a homecoming for Dean Boyd, their coach, who's a York native, and here's Dante Walker for four yards to the 30. And we'll see another uh, Dean brother next week, uh, Boyd brother, when York comes in to play Rock Hill. 
Second down and six. They really make it second and five as they give Walker to the 31. Northwestern started the series at the two yard line. We're inside of six minutes to go in a scoreless first quarter. They get twins to the long side. Thompson has yet to throw it. They run Jonathan Williams and Williams muscles his way up to about the 35. Jonathan Williams, tough runner. He gets those tough yards and I tell you, it takes two or three usually to get him down. Third and about a yard at the 35. Well, something's got to give tonight because Northwestern has not lost two in a row since 95. Marlboro County has not lost two in a row since 97. But with both teams coming in here off of losses, it's a long streak that's going to end for somebody. Third and one, really less than one. Marlboro County up in the gaps. They give it to Williams, and they'll have a first down to about the 36 and a half is where they'll put it down. Blitzing linebackers that time did a good job anticipating the snap count. They shot the gaps. Williams just followed that line, though, and picked up the first down. At the Trojan 37. So Northwestern playing it close to the vest so far. They haven't put the ball up yet. Of course, you'd like to be able to play ball control, keep the offense on the field as much as you can, and keep Marlboro County's defense on the field, keep the ball away from Newton. Here is Thompson throwing into the flat and threw it short of Brandon Pay. Second down. Bobo may have seen the safety coming up quick. Look like uh, as he started to release that ball, the safety made a break on it, and he may have thought twice about whether he had a clear path for that throw. 420 in the first, and Northwestern will have a second down on its 37. Thompson goes to the gun. Sets up, throws to the flat, has Brandon Pay at the 45, and he's out to about the 48 for another Northwestern first down. Good decision there by Thompson. He went to the right receiver. Newton, Seville Newton was in coverage, but he had a good 10-yard gap and, and cushion there, so easy pass, easy throw and catch. Fourth first down of the series, and it's at the 49. Carlin Long and Brandon Pay are out to the long side of the field. And Marlboro County looks like they're offside, and there is the flag. And this will apparently be on the Bulldogs and set up a first and five. Looks like Deion Douglas might have jumped. Well, that's a four-yard offside penalty. And makes it first and six. I really don't know how you mark off four yards on an offside, but they just did. I'll tell you who the officials are here in a minute. And the handoff to Dante Walker, and he breaks it. Inside the 20-yard line. Nice run. He broke the tackle of the linebacker to pick up an extra 20, just chased down from behind. And they'll mark it at the 17 for a 30-yard run. Savelle Newton makes the tackle, and Northwestern with another first down. Followed the blocking on the right side of the line that time. They quick hit, though, by Walker. I tell you, good acceleration through that hole. First down at the 17. Thompson to Dante Walker trying to get to the outside. Can't do it. Good penetration, and Jermaine Stanton, number 31, finished it off. Walker needs to be a little careful holding that ball way out there as uh, the tacklers are coming up. Got to bring that, that ball in once the uh, defenders are coming up. Second 11. By the way, the uh, referee tonight is Tommy Stribble, the umpire Marion. Big Bubba Hope. Big Bubba, no trouble. 
Linesman Ken Hudson, line judge Terry Trout, and the back judge is Jim Littlejohn, who is not one of the Gaffney Littlejohns. Second down 11 at the 18. Watch for that little out pattern. Might want to go to the air on the strong side. Carlin Long is the motion man, and it's the keeper for Bobo Thompson. And looked like he had a little bit of a hole, but wasn't there for very long. And Thompson has stopped just inside the 15. Two minutes to go in the quarter. We'll take a uh, timeout and come right back here as Northwestern has the ball at the Marlboro County 15. Four down area for Northwestern at the Bulldog 15. I can't compete with that. Here's Walker for a yard or two. Nothing doing up the middle that time. Marlboro County, nothing. Uh, they just stood up the offensive line for the Trojans. Thompson's going to go to the sideline, and I uh, think we're going to see a field goal attempt. It looks like the field goal team is coming on with Jimmy Mainers. Now let's see, Mainers will hold, and it looks like uh, Kirk Moore will come on to kick it. Mainers a backup quarterback, so a minute to go early in the game. Uh, Need to get everybody out there and get the snap before you get a delay, and they couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. So what would have been a 30-yard attempt will now be a 35. Well, I assumed it was a delay of game. Still waiting for the indication that they're going towards uh, the goal. Well, that's going to be close to a Northwestern first down as they'll put it down at the eight. It's going to be fourth and about a yard. Maybe call a timeout here and talk your options over, get the right play called. Well, there is a timeout Northwestern, and there is life. 45 seconds in a scoreless first quarter. Volkswagen South is turning up the heat this summer on all remaining 2002 Volkswagens. With payments as low as $239 a month for the 2002 Volkswagen Jetta and Beetle, or just $349 a month for the 2002 Passat. Real cool cars, real hot deals. Visit Volkswagen South, home of the zero down sign and drive. Really, absolutely zero down. Zero. Northwestern will go on fourth and one from the eighth. It is Williams, and it looks like he's got it. Yep, it's a first, first down, down for Jonathan Williams. Jonathan is a good short yardage runner. He got to almost the five, and Northwestern will move the sticks. They'll have a first and goal at the six-yard line. We will take another break here and come right back to District 3 after this. First and goal inside the six, we'll call it the five. And it's Dante Walker, and Walker driving down to about the one. Good strong run by Walker, took at least two Bulldogs to take him down. And that's gonna be well, the first quarter, Jeff. Well, Marlboro County thinks they have the ball, but I don't think the officials agree with them. No, there was an official right at the play, just watching to see if he went across the goal line. Never even looked uh, as if he thought there was a fumble. End of the first quarter, it's scoreless, but Northwestern will have the ball at the Marlboro County one when we start the second quarter. The series for Northwestern, the drive started at the Trojan two. It's gone 97 yards so far. It's second and goal from the one, and it is Jonathan Williams into the end zone untouched. Northwestern draws first blood. And Williams did some good work on the drive. He certainly did. It's always nice to have a fullback that you can count on for some tough yardage as well as being a good blocker. And Jeff, a key drive there. The Northwestern Trojans, as you said, went uh, 14 or 15 plays there, ate up a lot of that clock. And if you're going to beat a team with a star quarterback, that's the way you want to take care of things. A 98-yard drive that was set up by an interception by C.J. Barber. 
And there was a penalty that was really a key uh, play in that drive. It kept it going for Northwestern. And it looked like Northwestern took too long, and the penalty was against Marlboro County. Here is Kirk Moore for the extra point when they decide they're ready to do it. And we really couldn't see what the call was, so everyone still is kind of guessing as to the call against Marlboro. Here is Moore for the extra point. And Northwestern with a 7-0 lead just one second into the second quarter. Northwestern not able to put the ball in the end zone last week at Irmo. Just as impressive as you can be, 98 yards and 14 plays here to draw first blood against Marlboro County. And early last year, Jeff, that was a problem. They were a big strike offense, but they had trouble taking those long drives that took a lot off the clock. So that's a good sign here, game three against a tough defensive team. Kirk Ward to kick off for Northwestern, comes down to about the 13-yard line, and good coverage, and they'll get him at about the 23 or 24, and Bernard Galloway, their star running back, was hammered on the return. Looked like uh, Paul Lyons, number 93, in there first for the Trojans. Defensive lineman doing good uh, on the special teams. So Marlboro County starts at the 24, or not the 24, that's at the 19. Only a six yard return for Galloway. Good air time on that kick. Kirk Moore looks like he's got a good strong leg. Again, home opener, just seeing some of these guys for the first time. They spread the field, two wideouts either side. Newton from the shotgun quarterback draw. And Northwestern will stack him up near the line of scrimmage. And that was Chris Mitten, number 92 in there. And Mitten is a hard guy to get around. Another Low center of gravity, and he's about as tough a defensive tackle as you'll see. The one thing watching the Northwestern rush that time, they knew their lanes, that containment, and their discipline tonight. And that's what it takes against a scrambling quarterback. The, the linebacker stayed at home. They kept containment. And that's why the, that one didn't go for any more yardage. Newton has carried three times. He has a net of zero. Second and 10 at the 19. Newton, the ball on the ground. Newton picks it up, but there's nowhere for him to go. Take him down. Did get away from the first tackler, but by then the pursuit was all over him. Two or three Trojans had a chance at him. He bounced out. Finally, the pursuit got to him. Colby Good made first contact. Denzel Hinton was one of those that finished him off. So the ball is back to the, looks like the 13. And it'll be third and 16. Tell you what, Trojan defense come up with a stop here, and you put that uh, Marlboro County defense back out. After a three and out, that would be uh, just excellent to put that tired defense back out there. Well, Newton is always dangerous, though. You got him in a passing situation here. The linebackers coming Blitz. up. They're going to quick kick. And Newton, on third down, punts it out of there. Stay, stay away. Well, Northwestern will cover it at about the 35. Dangerous play, though. Jonathan Finley was able to cover, but very dangerous. She'd rather just let that ball roll and die, well, take for, possession. Yeah, Finley tried to pick it up and go with it, but his momentum was carrying him the other way, and uh, the ball off his hands, and finally Finley just had to dive on it. Northwestern will have it at the 35. We will take a timeout with 10.20 to go in the half, and the Trojans out in front, 7 to nothing. And for Savelle Newton, and Northwestern starts on its 35. Well, Marlboro County brought a good crowd with them, and they're not they're real not happy. Shy. Not happy. You almost close your eyes and think after he was back here. <laughs> Got all kind of distractions. <laughs> Phones ringing below us and around us and fireworks. Air horns. Here's Dante Walker, and Walker drives his way close to another Northwestern first down. They're going to give him nine yards to the 44. Very close. Good down and distance, though. Trojans uh, here might want to think about uh, going down the field, airing this one out. And I tell you, though, I think on this drive, they're going to keep it on the ground as much as they can as long as they're picking up good yardage because that defense, after that 14-play drive, they've got to be tired. Northwestern winning the war on the line of scrimmage, both sides of the ball so far. 
Linebackers up close. It's Williams for a first down as he drives his way out to about the 47. Good three or four yards there. Good hard running again by Jonathan Williams. Last time Marlboro County was here two years ago, Northwestern won at 34-14. And the key there, even though Northwestern turned it over like five times, was the fact that Northwestern's defensive front really dominated the game. They had 16 tackles for loss in that game. And they really kept uh, Newton, who was a sophomore back then, from getting much of anything going. Uh, first down at the 47, and it's Walker. Dante to the 50 and to about the 48. To two there to take him down. Northwestern making yardage on every play. We'll give him to the 49 of Marlboro County. It's second down and six. Seville Newton, the star quarterback, comes back in. He's played free safety. Looks like he's going to line up again at corner. Now, each time he's lined up at corner, he's been given a pretty good cushion. Looks like this time, though, he's going to come up on Carlin. No, Second and six. Backing out. They'll keep it on the ground. And it's Dante Walker for a couple of yards near the 47. And it'll be third and about four. The only reason I point that out is star quarterback, he's, he's getting some time on defense, but he is playing pretty soft. They're giving a good bit of cushion when he does come in. So see if the Trojans try to go and exploit that later in the game. Doing third down and four. And it looks like Newton will come out and play a corner. The wide side of the field against Carlin Long. Gives him about six, seven yards in the cushion. Third and four. Here's Thompson running the option and the pitch to Walker. And Walker still near the line of scrimmage. Seville Newton on the tackle. Marlboro blitzed on that. Looked like that play could go for some yardage, but uh, Seville Newton just fought through a block and made a great tackle. He's an athlete. He certainly is. Fourth and three, Northwestern will have to kick. Jimmy Mainers will punt. And that's Javel Bostic, who is back deep for Marlboro County. Back at about his 10. Mainers gets it out. Beautiful punt. That ball's going to be out of bounds. We'll see where they mark it. Where's he going to mark it? Hadn't settled it yet. Right at the 10. 10 yard line. It's just where the ball flies past the sideline, not where it lands. 6.50 first half, we'll take a timeout and come back. Northwestern with a 7-0 lead. That's your third. Pro County at the 10-yard line, Savelle Newton under center. And they'll give it to Galloway, and Paul Lyon says no way. <laughs> Nobody blocked Paul that time. He almost could have taken the handoff. Lions right there when Galloway took the handoff, and that was the end of that run. It's a loss of three. Lions, uh, I'm chuckling, though, because he, he made a solid hit, knew he had the back going down. As soon as he saw him off balance, though, those hands went for the ball. He was going to try to get a pick, pull that ball out uh, while he was going down. Lions, a three-year starter, five and a half sacks in Northwestern's first two games. Second and call it 12. And the toss to Galloway trying to get outside. Not going to be able to do it. Run down by Colby Good in a defensive tackle. And a gain of just back to the original line of scrimmage. Good pursuit that time. Northwestern stringing that play out. They had players coming in from behind and stringing it out in front. Third and 10. And Marlboro County, which was shut out in the second half against Scotland County, North Carolina, the third-ranked team in the uh, Tar Heel State last week, unable to do much on offense in the first half tonight. This is an offense that was touted as South Carolina's best coming into the season. Third and 10. Newton Blitz. runs the draw. Here's Galloway. And Galloway 
Looked like he might have some room, but stopped short of the sticks by Jonathan Finley, the safety. Good open field tackle. They ran right to the side where the blitz came from. Trojans uh, blitz from that right-hand side. Draw going right back to it. And Finley with a great open field tackle. So it's fourth and three. Coming up on five minutes to play in the half. And Northwestern has responded very well to that loss at Irmo last week against a real quality football team tonight. Newton will kick. Kind of short punt formation, just back about 10 yards. Newton 53 on his last kick. This one not as far. On the Marlboro County side of the field. And let's see where it's touched at about the 49. It's a good field position for the Trojans. The defense uh, comes up with a stop, and the Trojans are going to benefit offensively with good field position to start this drive. 32-yard kick. Well, they're going to mark it at the 45-yard line, say it was first touched there. Uh, 28-yard kick. Northwestern, of course, would like to pick up another one. Here's Thompson out into the flat. And not much for Carlin Long. He's hit near the line of scrimmage. The time they move Walker, Dante Walker, the tailback into the slot position. So really four wide outs, two to the left. Excuse me, three wide outs, two left, one right. Ricardo Patterson made the tackle against Long. Gain of a yard. Trojans offensively giving the Bulldogs a different look here. Looks like they're going to stay without Williams. And let's see if they move Walker out of the backfield into slot. Walker right now is the tailback. Five yards, about well, about seven yards really behind the line of scrimmage. He takes the handoff. And Dante Walker broke the first tackle, gets to the 40 for a four-yard gain, third and five. Dante having a good first half. I believe 98 yards, uh, week number one. He has uh, 180 yards in the first two games. Third and a long five. Need a conversion here to uh, try to drive this in and get some more points before halftime. Thompson drifting left. Slips, regains his balance, but is hit at the 45-yard line for a loss of five. Thank goodness he pulled that ball in just in time. He got nailed. Marlboro County doing a lot more blitzing than I thought they might. So watch for Northwestern. They're going to have to hit some short routes right in behind that blitz. They'll have to kick it here. Jimmy Mainers is on the kick. And Bostic is deep. That is 10. Most of this game played in the Marlboro County half of the field. Although Northwestern's lone scoring drive was a 98-yard drive. And this kick will bounce inside the 10. Takes a great Northwestern bounce and is down at the 5. Good coverage there by the Trojans. Is that Thomas Slaughter, 56, a down that I believe for the Trojans? Yes. So... We'll call a timeout here with 2.29 in the first half. Northwestern with a 7-0 lead. We'll be back at District 3. Three possessions this quarter. They started at the Marlboro County 19, the Marlboro County 10, and this one at the 5. Newton gives the ball to Galloway. No gain. Paul Lyons in there just uh, totally disrupting that play. The defense has been stout. Second and 10. Newton is three out of four for 20 yards throwing, and he's carried four times for minus six. And Northwestern's done a good job against the rest of the uh, Marlboro County backs, too. Here is the reverse uh, pivot by Newton, and he's out close to the 10. Looked almost like a busted play. Northwestern wants to stop the clock. They'd like to get the offense back there with another shot. It'll be third down in about six. So we'll keep it here, the ball at the Marlboro County nine. And Northwestern has done 
what they've wanted to do coming into this game. That is keep the Marlboro County offense off the field. You're exactly right. I mean, the, the big play, uh, big series was that 14, 15 play drive that uh, ate up most of the first quarter. But basically, this defense has stopped Marlboro County. The Trojans will pick up a few first downs, then punt it back. But uh, the Trojan offense have been out there for a whole lot more plays than the Marlboro County offense. Now, Marlboro County has just two first downs. They came on the first series, and that series ended when C.J. Barber intercepted Newton. And One Newton hasn't thrown the ball since then. No, he hasn't. One thing, too, with this field position, I mean, you know, with two good teams, in a close game, you want that field position advantage because just one wrong play, it's going to set your offense up or possibly get a defensive score. And both of these teams aware of how one play, one turnover can turn a game because it happened to both of them last week when uh, Northwestern gave up an interception that was run back for a touchdown. And Marlboro County had four second-half turnovers against Scotland County that uh, lost the game for them. Third and six here. And we'll see if Newton wants to throw. Long count by Savelle Newton, and maybe too long. A little difficult to anticipate what the call's going to be tonight because we've, we've guessed wrong a couple of times, but this one is a uh, procedure against Marlboro County. It'll be half the distance and make it third and about 10. Got him out, didn't have him lined up correctly, so it's going to cost the Bulldogs. No! Trojans doing a lot of uh, movement with their linebackers, keeping things uh, off balance. They'll fake a blitz uh, from one side and actually bring it from another. They'll look like they're going to blitz. They back out. Uh, just a uh, few all-out blitzes, but they're just coming from different spots. Well, Northwestern's always done that through the years. There's linebackers will be up there, and it's, it's like a chess match. Here is Newton scrambling in the end zone, deep down the sideline, and it is caught against double coverage out here in midfield. The coverage was there. The pass was just beautiful right on the money. Ricardo Patterson, I believe, makes the catch, although it's hard to catch that number. I believe that was King, King Vega. Vega. Yeah, 24 rather than 14. It's a 40-yard gain and a first down at the Marlboro County 45. And with 135 and a half, the Bulldogs have life. Well, Newton was in trouble in the end zone and kind of threw against his body. And Newton throws into the flat and a big hit out there near midfield after a gain of maybe five yards. C.J. Barber on the hit. Catch was made by Courtney Stubbs. Second and five at midfield, and the clock runs at 1.15. And now stops momentarily. Newton to throw. Lions coming after him. Newton steps up, throws on the run, juggled, caught at the 40-yard line, down to about the 37. Denzel Hinton making the tackle for Northwestern. Smart play by Newton that time. He broke containment, saw the two Northwestern linebackers stayed at home and found a receiver right in behind them. King Vega makes a second catch of the series. And we've got an injured Trojan on the far side. It's C.J. Barber. That's not what you want to see from the Trojan standpoint. Barber's really the, the veteran and the leader of that secondary. And Against a quarterback like Newton, you really uh, can't afford to lose somebody like that. Barber has an interception already, and Newton now is five out of six for 73 yards. Just when you commented he hadn't gone to the air, he's really heated up here in the last couple minutes. Well, he's a guy that can just hurt you running and throwing. Probably a little bit more dangerous running the ball than throwing it, although tonight uh, has not been able to get loose carrying the football, but last year, he uh, accounted for 44 touchdowns for Marlboro County. He threw for 23 and ran for 21. Set a school record with those 23 touchdown passes. I tell you, though, that last play really shows me that he's uh, he's got a good head, a uh, good football head on his shoulder there. He uh, broke containment, 
looked like you know a lot of quarterbacks just would have taken it hard and ran, but he, he knew where that line of scrimmage was. He saw the two linebackers waiting, just lofted a nice little pass once they committed to him and uh, picked up some nice yardage. Newton went to camp at South Carolina, and while most of the camp was one coach for 10 or 12 players, South Carolina had one coach for Newton the whole time he was there. They really want him to come, and it looks like he will. Uh, coach Dean Boyd said he'd be very surprised if Newton went anywhere other than South Carolina. But the Northwestern 37 on first down, and they fake it to Galloway. Newton rolls, throws, and it is broken up and incomplete. And they had a couple of shots to get that ball, but a great breakup by Omar Craig, the 10th grade cornerback, number four. And then it was almost caught, though, on the uh, deflection. And actually, you had one defensive player going after it and a Marlboro County receiver had a shot as well. Also, back at the line of scrimmage, Paul Lyons with good pressure there forced Newton really to throw that one off his back foot. Pretty good throw for somebody falling away from it. Newton throws to the sideline. It is caught and out of bounds inside the 30-yard line. It's going to be short of the first down. 43 seconds, clock management important now. Third down and a couple. And it was Doug Jennings who made the catch. At the 28, it's third and one. 43 seconds in the half. Marlboro County down by a touchdown. And the pass he has caught. They had two receivers right there. And one of them looked like he kind of ducked down and let the other one catch it. Certainly did. Both ran just a... Little quick curl, and uh, either one could have caught that pass. Looked like Rendrick Taylor made the catch. First down at the 23. Flag is down. Newton rolls and throws, and it is caught inside the 20-yard line. And getting loose down the sideline, taking it in, but we're going to have to check the penalty as that Procedure. was King Vega. Procedure call. It's coming back. King Vega made a heck of a play on that ball for Marlboro County catching the short ball and getting loose down the sideline, but the play is coming back. Illegal motion there by Marlboro County. And I'm not so sure that would have actually gone for a score. It seemed like the defensive back there for the Trojans just kind of pulled up. I mean, they know, they know better, but it still looked like he pulled up a bit. So it takes it back to the Northwestern 28, and it'll be first and 15. Newton is now 7 of 9 for 87 yards. Interesting close here of the first half, isn't it, Jeff? 23 seconds left, and, you know, earlier in this drive, Northwestern calling a timeout on a third down play where they thought they might get good field position, and uh, Marlboro County burned them on a long play, and now they're set up trying to get some points on the board. Well, Marlboro County had third and ten on its own five, and Newton was scrambling around in the end zone and looked like he might have thrown off the wrong foot, but still a pretty good throw into double coverage and a 40-yard catch. And that has uh, been a spark for Marlboro County, and they've moved the ball down now to the uh, Northwestern 28 after the penalty takes a uh, touchdown play away from them. 23 seconds to play in the half, and this, this offense is just so explosive that you just can't relax against them at all. And C.J. Barber, who was injured earlier, is back out there at safety for Northwestern. Newton from the gun. Here comes Lyons after him, and Lyons couldn't hold him. Newton rolls and throws a man wide open. Touchdown. They had two receivers wide open in the end zone. Oh, broken coverage there, two wide open. And the defensive line with great penetration. They just couldn't finish the play, and Seville Newton makes them pay for it. I think it was uh, King Vega who caught it. And it, well, now I'm thinking it might have been Rod Brody, 21. They had two receivers wide open in the middle of the end zone. And I think that Rod Brody caught that ball, and I think that... Uh, Vega was the other receiver out there. They're an extra point away from tying this game. With 14 seconds to go in the half, 
And we have a chance to pause, and we'll uh, we'll come back at the District 3 after this. And away, and Kevin Miller will try to tie the game. And they'll shift and let Miller do it. Now, the Marlboro County radio people uh, think that it's Lavander McCray who made that touchdown catch. To me, it looked like Rod Brody. And the kick is good, and we are tied at seven. Those numbers are difficult to pick out. But we are tied with 14 seconds to play in the half, and a great half of work by Northwestern is uh, negated by that last drive. The last drive, I tell you, Northwestern uh, had the game going the direction they wanted at 7-0 lead, but really they had dominated uh, the stats as much as you can dominate against a, another strong team. But I tell you, Marlboro County really turned it around the key play being that third and 10 from the five yard line, completed the big pass and then marched it on into the end zone with just 14 seconds left. 85 yards in the air in that drive for Savelle Newton, who was five out of six for 85 yards in the drive. So 14 seconds in the half, and Marlboro County has tied this game at seven. Keep your eye out here, maybe even an onside. They'll kick it deep, and it's into the end zone. So Northwestern will get it at the 20, and I would think that Trojans would be content to go into the locker room here. I would think so. Uh, nothing fancy here. Let's just take it to the half, 7-7. Seven, seven. You've got the momentum that's already swung here toward the end in Marlboro's favor. Let's not do anything else. Long drive for Northwestern. 14 plays, 98 yards. Jonathan Williams took it in from the one. And then Marlboro County ties it with 14 seconds to play in the half. And it looks like Northwestern will run out the clock in the first half as Bobo takes the knee and that'll do it. 7-7 seven, seven at the half between two teams that have as good a chance to win state championships as any two teams in the state. A lot of times you come into games like this and it's uh, a hyped matchup and it just doesn't live up, but so far this one's living up to the billing. I suspect we may come down to the gun on this one. 7-7 seven, seven at halftime. Kickoff taken at about the seven yard line and Galloway crosses the 30 and Bernard Galloway is to the 37. Gentel Hinton came up with a tackle there. Galloway just about uh, took that one back. Starts at the 37 for Marlboro County. Well, those, those Bulldog numbers are tough to pick up from up here. I remember seeing uh, Aiken High School back in the days when William Perry was playing, and they had similar uniforms, except they had a mesh jersey over top of them. That was really guesswork. First down at the 37 for Marlboro County. Newton and Galloway is stuck as soon as he takes the handoff. And making the tackle for Northwestern was Jason Robinson, number 42. Robinson in there. Quickly, good penetration. And for the viewers at home, if you're wondering why we're struggling with the numbers when you see the downfield camera, they probably come up clear. But once they get over about uh, halfway across the field, the light shining off just create a yeah. awful reflection. We don't have a monitor here either. Here's the pass in the flat and another good play in the secondary for Northwestern as uh, that was Omar Craig who came up on their wideout. And I think the uh, wideout was King Vega. And the play gains just three yards to the 35. It's third down and 12. No huddle here. Four wideouts for Marlboro County going to the shotgun. Newton was 8 of 10 for 115 in the first half and a touchdown. Newton back to throw. Airs it out. Vega, the intended receiver. Craig right there with him. Craig did a great job positioning that time, not letting the receiver get around. Just a good, smart play there by the young sophomore. You know, we've seen some good running quarterbacks over the years, and I know Dorman's had a couple of them that we've seen, but we haven't seen a quarterback who has the ability to run and the kind of an arm that Newton has. Exactly right. Just something special back there. He's a threat either in either direction. 
And Newton will kick. I think he sold concessions at halftime, too. Newton rides this one out of here. C.J. Barber at his 28-yard line, trying to get to the sideline. Got one block, tries to reverse his field. Needs another. Reverses it again, but there's nowhere else for him to go, and he's down at the 32. Well, C.J. kept that one alive as long as he could. Yeah, I'll mark it at the 33. So good start for the Trojan defense, a three and out, and uh, decent field position back for the offense. Of course, they played uh, on their side for most of the half. They had great field position. But one time they did, and they took it over the distance. First look at the offense in the second half, ball at the 33. Bobo Thompson runs up and now lets it go. Wide open is Carlin Long at the 35, at the 30, and down to about the 27. Nice play. Trojans came out passing formation. Bobo Thompson, initial rush, he ducked underneath, reset, and found his receiver, Carlin Long, wide open downfield. It looked like Bobo was going to run with that ball, and I think that uh, Marlboro County thought he was too. And then he looked up right before he crossed the line of scrimmage and found Long open across the middle. Nice decision, good look, and throw back across the field. 40 yards to Carlin Long and a first down at the Bulldog 27. Northwestern's done most of it on the ground, and here's the guy who's done most of it. It is Dante Walker to about the 15 for another Northwestern first down. Northwestern coming out two good plays in a row. Looks like they want to take it in immediately, get this off uh, to a great start in the second half. 12 yards for Dante Walker. He has 87 yards and 14 carries tonight. I like their attitude, though, Jeff, coming out. The offense just looks uh, very, very determined. They're firing off the ball here. Want to turn that momentum back in their favor. Well, Marlboro County had the momentum going into halftime after the uh, scoring drive at the end of the half. Here is Jonathan Williams for a couple of yards inside. Got to about the 13, second and eight. Big okay. hit there, Melvin Simmons, uh, 41, and also number 70 for the Bulldogs trying to pick up that number. Boy, they brought enough kids with them tonight, didn't they? they it did. takes two pages for their roster. James Manning, number 70. I'm a little handicapped. I, I got a defective program. <laughs> I've got only one of the two sheets for Marlboro County. Second and eight at the 13. Northwestern runs from the eye. Long the motion man. Thompson rolls and throws. Touchdown. Touchdown. Has Mainers. a tight end, Barrett Mainers. They set it up well, 13 yards to Barrett Mainers, and Northwestern regains the lead. And one adjustment you can see, they're rolling Bobo to the right, giving him a little extra time. And I tell you what, he uh, took advantage of it. Two great passes on that drive. And Northwestern really hasn't thrown much to the tight end since Benjamin Watson was here. If they get the tight end here and they get the lead back. And the extra point by Kurt Moore is good. And Northwestern with a 14 to seven lead. We are midway through the third quarter. Gets the lead back at 14 to seven. First catch of the year for Barrett Mainers and it's a 13 yard touchdown. And the kickoff comes down to about the 12-yard line. Galloway, flag is down, and Bernard Galloway is down at the 24. So Northwestern did a real nice job of turning the momentum back their way. Early stages of the second half, 8:41 in the third quarter. Certainly did. I think uh, tight game. It really says something. Trojans coming out uh, first drive and just no nonsense taking it downfield. A good spring in their step and they really look determined on that drive. A couple of big passes. Uh, the 13-yard touchdown pass and a 40-yard pass in the first play of the drive to Carlin Long. So Marlboro County starts at the 10. Five wideouts, four right and one to the left. It's like a Florida formation. Newton in the shotgun. 
And Newton swings one out. The knee was down, and the play's going to lose four or five yards as the catch was made uh, by uh, Doug Jennings. But Jennings was knee was uh, knee was down when he made the catch at the five yard line. So it's second and 15. Pass was in the ground as well. So he, Jennings really had no chance at that one. He had to go down that low to try to pick it off the ground. Newton is nine of 12 for 110 yards. But they have stopped his running game. Newton's carried just four times for minus six. And this is a kid who is as dangerous as it gets when he's running the football. Newton standing at the goal line in the shotgun, second and long. Linebackers creeping up, and it's the run. Newton breaks a tackle. Newton crosses the 15, and Denzel Hinton makes the tackle at about the 17-yard line. Newton slipped the tackle that time with Juan Marshall, and I tell you, Hinton, with good speed, brings him down from behind, bring up third and short. You would think that they're going to make an effort to have Newton carry the ball more than he has so far. He picked up 13 there to the 18-yard line, and it's third and about two. Newton from the shotgun. Newton will keep it. And Newton is stopped short of the sticks. Credit. And it'll be fourth down. Credit Marshall, I believe, that time. He turned that play inside. Uh, great penetration from his linebacking position. Forced Newton inside. and Chris uh, Reed, number 22, finished it off. Yeah. Now, one adjustment we see uh, from Marlboro County, looks like uh, from this first series, they're going to run more wide outs, try to spread that Northwestern defense out, maybe given, uh, trying to give Newton a little more uh, room to run with it, create some more lanes for him. They stop him on third and two, and Newton will have to kick. C.J. Barber is at the Marlboro County 48. High and short, almost straight up in the air. Get away. It's a live ball, and it looks like Marlboro County's got it at the 41. I don't know, but the, the Northwestern player might have just lost sight of that ball. It was very, very high. It was a, it was a shank, but not your typical shank. Very high ball. Tough to, to pick up in the lights. Coming straight down as well. So a tough break there for the Trojans, and Marlboro County gets a, gets a nice break to keep, uh, keep their drive going. They'll have it at the 41 on the recovery. So they get a life. And Newton wants to throw. He's down the middle, incomplete. And a big hit out there for Northwestern as Jonathan Finley came up and really popped the receiver coming across the middle. He's going to think about that middle next time he comes across after that hit by Finley. I think it was Doug Jennings who got hammered, and Jennings comes off. Second down at the 41. Newton, 9 of 13 for 110. Newton wants to throw it again. Sideline, it is caught, and out near the 50-yard line. And that was King Vega for a gain of about nine yards. Chris Menton out there quickly as well for the Trojans from his line position, helping out on that tackle. Give him an eight-yard gain. Third and two, Bulldog 49. Try and have Newton make a play. He comes up under center. Newton throws quickly, has a man for a first down, and Finley makes the tackle at the Northwestern 45. Trojans need to wrap up a little. They're starting to uh, miss on those first tackles here in the second half. Levander McRae made the tackle, made the uh, reception at the Northwestern 45, so they'll move the sticks. Drive kept alive on a fumbled punt return. Not so much a fumble, but the ball just hit one of the Northwestern up men on a very short kick. Newton wants to throw. Pressure. Scrambles. 
throws into traffic. C.J. Barber is second pick tonight. He's got Barber at the 20, 30. Barber to the 40 and fumble. Yes. And it's still, still loose. loose at the sideline right at the Northwestern bench. I think it went out. Let's see. I think it's Marlboro County up there. Marlboro County's going to get the ball back there. Second break of the drive. Tough, tough break there. I tell you, C.J. Barber did a great job, but hats off to the Marlboro County receiver who came back behind, and you knew he was going for that strip. He had his hand, and he chopped down as he made that tackle, and he stripped the ball loose. So Northwestern stopped him twice, but they haven't been able to get the offense on the field. Northwestern 40-yard line and a first down for the Bulldogs. And the smoke clears. That play winds up as a five-yard gain and a new series of downs. And now mentally it's tough for the Trojans. They've just got to get their heads back in it and, and bear down here, stop this drive. Newton keeps it. Lions after him. Newton throw back across the middle, and it is caught at the 20-yard line. Finley got picked. He certainly did. And the catch was made by Rod Brody, who caught the touchdown pass. Wasn't called, though, because the ball hanging up in the air. Two receivers right there, and Finley did get a little pick. He's able to recover, though, luckily, and make the tackle to prevent that from going in the end zone. 27 yards of first down. Northwestern 23. Newton is now 11 for 16. Two interceptions, one touchdown. Newton on the straight run. And he's down to about the 10 for a gain of three. Defense did a good job. Again, staying home, staying in their lanes, and that's the reason Newton's not broken off any big runs. Defensive front, though, they look like they're uh, gasping for air. We've got guys holding, holding their pants, coming up slow, bending over. Now they've Tough been out drive. there a long time. It's uh, this drive now. They've uh, been five minutes old. What makes it tougher? They're chasing Newton down a good bit on every play. Second down, just inside the ten. Newton will run it again. Short side, and he is down to about the six. Paul Lyons in on the tackle as well as number 42, Jason Robinson for the Trojans. So a gain of three, third down and three at the six. Newton has carried eight times for 15 yards. Jeff, a big play here, third down and a couple to go. Three minutes to go, third quarter. It's a four down area, so Northwestern's gonna have to dig in a couple of times. Keeper Newton can't get away. Paul Lyons. Paul Lyons read the play and made the tackle. Great tackle, too. Josh Beasley falling right in behind him, but Lyons with a great, great move and tackle. Loss of three, and here comes the field goal team. Big play by Lyons. It was a four down area, but Lyons makes it too long to go with a three yard loss. Fourth and six. Timeout on the field. So there's a timeout, 229 third quarter, Northwestern, 14 to 7. America is traveling with Michelin. Right Miller on for the field goal, 26 yarder. And it's good. So Marlboro County gets three out of it. Miller hits the 26 yard field goal, and with 226 to go in the third quarter, Northwestern's lead has been cut. To 14 to 10. Northwestern's lead cut to 14 to 10 and a kickoff into the end zone. Kevin Miller kicks it into the end zone for the second time tonight, and Northwestern will start the series at the 20. Kind of a strange series for Marlboro County as they got the ball back after a short punt hit one of the uh, Northwestern up men, then got the ball back again when C.J. Barber intercepted the ball and fumbled it at the end of a long run back. Tell you what, 
You don't see many drives like that, and thank goodness Paul Lyons came up with that big tackle, and it only resulted in a field goal for Marlboro County. They were staring at the goal line. Well, Northwestern, very impressive. Last time they had the ball, they put it in the end zone. And here comes Dante Walker with running room up to the 30-yard line, close to a Northwestern first down. Good cutback and a huge hole that time for Walker. It will be right at the 30. It looks like it's, I think, just going to be short. I think it's just short of that stripe. Second and very, very short. Second down and an inch. Pay is the motion man, and the handoff to Walker. Another first down as he crosses the 35, gets to the 38. That will put Dante Walker over 100 yards for the game. I was going to say, he's having a good night. Strong running, offensive line creating some good holes for him, but I'll tell you, he's running strong and hard tonight. It is at the 38. 105 yards and 16 carries for Dante Walker. We'll bring Jonathan Williams up in a slot this time rather than from fullback, and he'll go in motion. Take it to Walker. Bobo's in trouble. Gets away from one man. Throws short into the flat to Williams. But Thompson did a good job to avoid the sack. Yeah. Even though he couldn't get enough on it to try to complete the pass, the main thing there, he avoided the big sack. Yeah, it's been a good one. We expected it would be. Stephen Burris checks in for Northwestern as an extra wide out on second and ten. Aaron Burris is a slot receiver to the right. One of three. In fact, they might have started a little early. Don't see a flag, and here's Bobo Thompson. Close to a first down near the 48-yard line. Trojans, I believe, did catch a break there. Looked like the uh, maybe possibly Walker fired off just a step early, half step early. Looks like it's just short of a Northwestern first down. We're going to have to, I think, bring the sticks in and look at it. Looks a little bit short from here. 51 seconds in the quarter, and we'll uh, pause from District 3. Northwestern leads at 14 to 10. For hot sizzling, hand-padded burgers grilled to perfection and real fresh cut french fries, bring your family and friends out to the Medium Place Cafe. We've got something to cure any size appetite. For you little pokes, try our small heifer hamburger. And for you man-sized appetite, sink your teeth into our famous double bull cheeseburger. Open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. There's plenty to choose from at the Medium Place Cafe. Heck, we've got a tanning salon next door. The Medium Place Cafe, located near the York Recreational Complex. For the best service in automotive collision work, trust the pros, Auto Pros. Because accidents happen, we are there when you need us. Our collision center is equipped with a laser measuring system to get your car back to its exact specifications. And we also offer great deals on pre-owned vehicles. It is your choice to choose. Why not choose Auto Pros? When you set out to do a job right, starting with the proper materials becomes downright essential. At City Builders, we have over 45 years of experience providing quality lumber, expert customer service, and fast delivery. All from a name you can trust. When you want it built right, 47. Williams, he will have a first down. Took a good lick, but got to midfield. And he still fell forward. He took a hard lick, but I tell you, he drives forward on every play. Well, he's always going to get you at least a yard. First down. Northwestern's offense in this half has been pretty much unstoppable. They went 67 yards in four plays, the only other series they had it. And this series started at the 20, and they picked up a first down at midfield. 
Could be the last play of the quarter. Thompson being chased, trying to get to the corner, and runs out of bounds near the line of scrimmage. Two seconds to play in the quarter, and it looks like he ran out right at midfield. Tom Thompson rolled towards his three receivers, gives him a nice clear look at all three, the routes they're running, just uh, easier to pick up what they're doing in the coverages, and he also has that run option. That time, he reversed field and almost paid for it. And they'll go to a run formation here as Jonathan Williams comes in replacing Stephen Burris. They line up Williams in the slot. Last play of the quarter, second down at midfield. Dante Walker, and he's run well all night, and he's close to another first down at the 40. Maybe just a little bit shy, it's gonna be close. That'll be the end of three, Northwestern with a 14 to 10 lead over Marlboro County. Strong enough for an elephant to walk across. Loop lock pool covers available at Carolina Pool Management are heavy on safety. The mesh cover even allows rainwater to drain right through, so no dangerous standing water can ever form on top. A loop lock cover even goes on and off in a snap. At Carolina Pool Management, our technicians can custom design your loop lock cover for a perfect fit. Call Carolina Pool Management today for your free estimate, 704-889-4439. Savor the flavors of Italy at DeMarco's Italian Grill in Fort Mill, where you can always choose from homemade lasagna, seafood dishes, real New York-style pizza, and many daily specials. Join us on Sunday for our Italian feast, an incredible buffet with over 30 items. It's well worth the trip to DeMarco's Italian Grill, located on Gold Hill Road, behind McDonald's in Fort Mill. Fresh from our family to yours, come experience DeMarco's Italian Grill. The historic Reed Mansion in downtown Pineville invites you to experience Bliss, superb hair and coloring services, plus a full range of indulgent spa options. Relax in one of our soothing massage chairs and experience the bliss of a perfect manicure and pedicure. Soothe your tight muscles and reduce stress with one of our many massage options. Treat someone special to the Bliss experience with a Bliss certificate. Visit Bliss Salon and Day Spa for a personal restoration and a healing of a different kind. I love my Carolina country home. I love my country. I love my country. It's a place to call my home. I love my country. No matter how long I'm gone. No Kicked and moved forward. Four turnovers last week. And one here. It could hurt. Marlboro County gets it at the 12. They keep Northwestern off the board. So here comes Newton again. He is dangerous from any place on the field. He is 11 for 16 for 145 yards. Two interceptions, C.J. Barber's picked him twice. And here's Galloway trying to get to the outside. Can't great do play. it, he's hit at the 10. Denzel Hinton read that one. Great tackle, great pursuit. Uh, you remember Denzel broke his arm in the Dorman game last year and had to miss the state championship game against Spartanburg, and they really missed him. That defense started getting worn down in the second half, and uh, you, you had to think that Denzel could have made a difference had he been able to, to play that day. Yeah, Denzel's one of the players that you can always count on to come up with some big plays, and it was just missing. You know, Every time you needed a big play in the second half of that game, number 41 just wasn't out there to do it. Newton to throw. He's chased near the goal line. Throws back, open man, out to the 30-yard line, and to about the 34 and a first down. And I wish we could identify these receivers a little bit quicker. I think that was number eight. I Eric still can't Nolan. tell. It's coming off here, is that it's 10, it's I 10. think. Andre Williams. That's twice tonight that uh, Savelle Newton has burned the Trojans scrambling around near the end zone, finding an open receiver. 24-yard gain to the 34. And Newton 
Swings one out near the 30-yard line and dancing around near the 40 before the pursuit can catch up to King Vega. See where they mark it. And about the 41, gain of seven. Second and three. 13 of 18 for 176 is what we have Savelle Newton for. Second and three. Newton will keep it. Tough going for just about three yards. He's close to the sticks, though, at the 44. I think he's got the first down. Not much room, but enough to get that first down and keep this drive moving. First down it is. They've held Newton in check on the ground just 15 yards and 10 carries. Trojan defense needs to come up here with a big play on a first down. Put them in a down and distance disadvantage on second and third. And the Marlboro County 44. Newton has a man open at the 50 yard line. And it's going to be a gain of about eight more. As it looked like Andre Williams made the catch. Craig makes the tackle at the Northwestern 48. Second down and two. And instead the Bulldogs are in down and distance advantage rather than disadvantage. Second and short. They've got a lot of options with a dangerous quarterback. Newton, bit of a low snap. Newton takes out, can't get loose. They'll get him for a loss back on the Marlboro County side of the field. And it looked like Josh Beasley among those there for Northwestern. Beasley, Paul Lyons, Chris Reed, three or four Trojans. You can just pick, uh, pick your man there. Loss of three, third and five. Marlboro County, 49. Under seven and counting, the Trojan defense needs a stop, holding on to a four-point lead. Newton throwing and a big what a hit, break incomplete. Jonathan as it was Finley. Finley who really lowered the boom on King Vega. And great timing by Finley. Well, King got crowned there as Jonathan Finley separated him from the ball. Fourth and five. I think they're going to go here. 6.44 to play. Big play here. Both sides come to their feet. That's what you'd like to see in a great matchup. Fourth and five. Newton throws to the flat. Yes. Broken up. And Northwestern will take it on down. James Robinson with a great breakup, a young sophomore with a big play. Northwestern will get the ball as James Robinson broke it up. 6.39 to play. We'll take a break. Northwestern leads it 14 to 10. Northwestern takes over at the Marlboro County 49, and they give it to Dante Walker for just a yard. See if Northwestern can chew up some clock. 6.30 and running, and a Bulldog is down injured. Haven't had quite as much offense as I thought we might have tonight, but we've we've had a heck of a high school football game. We certainly have, but I'll tell you one thing that's a real positive: the Trojan offense has moved the ball consistently through the night. Only 14 points to show for it, but they have uh, they've been impressive. They've mixed the play calling up well, and they've been able to run that ball with Dante Walker over 100 yards. And yeah, we do have a Marlboro County player who is down. And with 6.30 to play, we can take a break. We'll come back to District 3 right after this. Deion Douglas is the injured player for Marlboro County and doesn't look like he's coming back anytime soon as he is uh, 
needing assistance to get very slowly over to the sideline. Not very sturdy on his feet. Can't quite tell what uh, what the injury is to his legs, but cannot put very much weight on either leg. Second and nine, Northwestern. Marlboro County, 48. Bobo Thompson will keep it. Trying to get to the corner and can't quite make it. He's tackled at about the 44. One thing, though, he, he cut it inside there, stays in bounds, keeps that clock running. Bobo looks a little shaken up here. Looks like Ricardo Patterson made the tackle. Thompson may have to come out. He's headed over that way. But now turns and comes back to the huddle. Just looking for a play, I guess. Third down. And five. Need to get up to the line of scrimmage here. Big third down. Bulldogs need a stop here. 5.30 to play. Thompson keeps it to the right. May have fumbled. He did. Second fumble in the second half by the Trojans, and the Bulldogs have the ball. Well, four last week, and we've had a few tonight. Melvin Simmons may have been the man for the Bulldogs to come up with that one. Is that four turnovers for Northwestern now? Yes, one on the uh, punt, one interception that was fumbled, and then two fumbles by the offense. Marlboro County on its own 42. 5.24 to play. Newton being chased. Gets it off under pressure. A man open. It's off oh. his hands and falls incomplete. And C.J. Barber with a dive. Almost had pick number three. Yeah, when you saw that ball deflect and go softly up into the air with two Trojans coming in quick, you thought you might have had the ball back for the Trojans not to be. Josh Beasley got in and pressured Newton. But he had a receiver open. Yeah, they've had that receiver in the middle of the field, just kind of right in the middle of that coverage, always is an outlet whenever he's uh, had a good bit of time to throw tonight. Second down at the 42. Low snap. Newton Beasley, Beasley after him, and Newton is down. Tried to reverse his field before Beasley could get there, and big loss. That's twice in a row that Beasley has either gotten to Newton or just about gotten to him. Play before, he sure would have gotten a quarterback hurry, forced that throw, and that time gets to the south. Ten-yard loss. It's third and 20 at the 32. <laughs> 440 and running. Newton, here comes Hinton after him. Newton, the ball Loose slips ball. out of his hands, and Marlboro County recovers it, but it'll be fourth down in a mile. Great pass rush by Denzel Hinton. Almost could have been called, the Bulldogs could have been called for a block in the back. They kind of knocked Hinton off course. He looked like he had a sack. Great defensive stand when they needed it by the Trojans. Great pressure by Northwestern on all, all three. three. Exactly. Another 10-yard loss, fourth and 30 at the 22. And Newton will have to kick it with inside of four minutes to play. And Northwestern does not have anybody deep. They are wary of a fake. Takes a Marlboro County bounce near the 30-yard line. Northwestern has 337 to kill have the Northwestern series after this. Volkswagen South. 37 to kill. Dante Walker. Just across the 30. And Marlboro County comes up with the ball, but I think the play was dead. Yeah, that was close. The last two Northwestern drives have ended in fumbles, so the Trojans need to take care of that ball. 
was Robert Ayers who wound up with his hands on the football, but after the play had ended. And that play's going to gain about three. It'll be second down at the 32, and Northwestern's turned it over four times, and you can't stand to do it again. No. I mean, you're playing with fire against a guy like Newton. The defense has risen to the occasion after the last two fumbles, but you cannot afford to cough up that ball, much less at this area of the field. Northwestern needs to get a couple of first downs and just run this clock out. 3.19 to go. We will take a break and come back. Is that the last one? Yeah. Western on the 32. And they give it to Williams and Jonathan to the 35. Trojans pulling everyone in tight, but that also allows the Bulldogs to keep everyone around the line of scrimmage. I think on third down, let's look for the Trojans to at least spread it out. Even if they keep it on the ground, they may want to spread that offense out and pull some of the Bulldog defenders away from that line of scrimmage. You know, Marlboro County calling their second time out here, so uh, Northwestern's got a big play coming up, third and fourth at 35. And their defense has really been asked to hold the Ford here because uh, four t uh, turnovers, but the defense has been equal to it. They certainly they've, they've held a very uh, explosive offensive team to 10 points. They've held Savelle Newton to minus yardage on the ground. Remember, Newton had more rushing yards last year than any high school quarterback in the nation. He is a very, very dangerous runner, and Northwestern has hemmed him in as well as it can be done tonight. They have been impressive in the, in the way that they have hemmed him in. And going back to the defensive stands, two defensive stands ago, the cornerbacks made the big plays. First, Jonathan Henley, and then James Robinson. And then on the last series, it was the defensive line's turn. Josh Beasley with a couple of great pressures, one for a sack, and Denzel Hinton with another. Third and four. Trojans do spread it out some offensively. Here's Thompson on the keeper, and Bobo into the secondary and a huge first down. Crosses the 45. A Trojans. huge first down as we come up on the three-minute mark. And that was a run all the way. The Trojans out of that set have let uh, Bobo roll and then have a run pass option, but they're the, the run all the way. 12-yard run on third and four. Remember, uh, Marlboro County's burned a couple of first down, of a couple of timeouts. So they're going to be limited in their ability to stop the clock down the stretch here. New series of downs at the 47. Northwestern with a 14 to 10 lead. Williams and Jonathan for two yards to the 49. Dante Walker, we have 20 carries, 121 yards. But you mix that in with uh, some timely runs for Jonathan Williams and Bobo Thompson on the keeper. And Northwestern's been able to, for the most part, control the clock. Bobo Thompson with some nice passes as well tonight when they've needed it. Second down eight. Walker crosses the 50. To about the 47 for a gain of maybe four. Bulldogs look like they're going to burn their last time out of the night. 147 to play. Northwestern's going to be looking at third down. And about four. Northwestern can pick up the sticks here. They should be able to run the clock out. They certainly should. Dante Walker, I tell you, it's a good thing we are late in this game and running the clock out. He looks like he's just barely hanging in there tonight. Uh, kind of limping to the sideline in between. I don't know if he has another run left in him or not. I imagine they'll probably do what they did last time on third and four, let Bobo try to make a play. I would think so. I don't know if you give him a pass option because, you know, the one downside, if the pass is incomplete, the clock stops, gives that much more to the Bulldogs. Well, we will see uh, Dean Boyd's brother in here next week as Rock Hill plays host to York. We've got some good matchups here. Tonight's matchup followed next week with York and Rock Hill. That'll be an exciting matchup. And then Gaffney comes back into town two weeks from now to face the Trojans. 
And that's always an event. Well, this could be the ball game. Third and four. Shotgun. Bobo, straight run. Nowhere to go. And they're going to turn it over on downs. One more shot for Marlboro County. Jonathan Williams tried to seal off that outside edge, just couldn't do it, so Thompson pulled it up inside and just dove for what he could get. Fourth down. After no game, fourth and four, Northwestern will take as much time as they can before they kick it away. Marlboro County cannot stop the clock. Again, they've burned all their timeouts. So Northwestern looks like they're just going to take a delay here. Take a delay, then bring Mainers out for a punt. Uh, he's been impressive tonight, and what I do is angle that one, try to pin the Bulldogs deep. Well, I guess they could call a timeout, but they're not going to do that. So with 105 to go, Marlboro County will get one more shot. And you think back and first half, you saw what uh, the Bulldogs did with two minutes of time. So no lead is safe with this Bulldog offense. Mainers will kick, and Javel Bostic is deep. Watch number 41 for the Bulldogs. He's, he's quick, he's gotten in some pretty good rushes. Good snap to Mainers, no rush. No rush. Bostic drops it at the 20 and runs it up to about the 24. No rush and great coverage by the Trojans, so the Bulldogs are going to have to take it quite a ways. They need a touchdown. Field goal is not going to do it. And they are 76 yards away with 56 seconds left. But they've got a time bomb at quarterback in Savelle Newton. 14 of 22 for 184 yards. So the Trojan defense just needs to dig in one last time with 56 seconds to go. Safety's playing about 20 yards off the line of scrimmage. Newton runs up, has running room. And that's the danger. And he's put down by Denzel Hinton after a gain of about 10 to the 34. Best thing is no timeouts for the Bulldogs. They're going to get... They're a penalty. Newton throwing deep. Throwing deep. And it is incomplete down near the five-yard line, and that's it. Denzel Hinton dropping back from linebacker to help break that play up. James Robinson, number 20, in there as well. I was scared he was going to interfere for a moment there. It looked like he was going to come through the receiver, but he held off, and the Trojans take home a big victory, Jeff. Well, it came right down to the last play, too, didn't it? It uh, sure did. It's never easy when you're going up against a great quarterback, and Savelle Newton is that. And, and it looks like we've got a little bit of something going on here right in the middle of the field. Moose Wallace in there trying to break it up. And that's just, uh, that's sad to see. And there's another one going here. There. Two or three skirmishes. And you just hate to see this. Like a big mosh right in the middle of the field. They've got one Trojan Boy, cornered. That. Boy, there's. That is sorry. Somebody a lot needs of to come to his protection. There. They, they, Marlboro County has one Trojan down on the field just kicking. That is sorry sportsmanship. Boy, this is an ugly scene here. That is sorry. There need to be suspensions there. There is no... That is unbelievable. I'll tell you, 15 years, I've never seen anything like this. They Not had, here. They had about 10 guys with one Trojan down. Looked like Laquarius Swearinger may have been the player that they had taken down. They pulled him off to the side, and then about 10 of them just went after him, kicking and hitting, before the Rock Hill police could get someone over to start pulling that off. Well, it's an ugly end to a terrific football game. I just as soon talk about the game as yeah. to the, the scene that followed the game. It, it was just a great game, just what you'd love to see with two great matchups, and then just what occurred then is just uh, horrendous. Well, Northwestern gets the win at 14-10. to 10. This two teams that really don't uh, aren't very used to losing. Uh, Northwestern hadn't lost two in a row since 95. Marlboro County hadn't lost two in a row since 97, but Marlboro County will leave here with their second consecutive loss, and they are 
still trying to work things out on the field. I think it's still uh, yeah, because people district, trying to sort some things out. District 3, of course, uh, both uh, teams go to the same end of the field. We've got another injured player down. And I tell you, that, that doesn't look good. Something is happening to this young man at the 30. Uh, that was not a fighting incident, I don't believe. Well, it's just hard to tell um, what all exactly went on out there and how somebody might have gotten hurt. Well, this guy, I watched this player come over, and he was uh, slow getting up and walking over and needed some attendance. And uh, you got to wonder if, uh, you know, there may be some sort of a heart problem or something. I mean, the way the Northwestern trainers were summoned back and ran down the field. Well, I, I really don't know what caused all of this mess. It, it didn't look like there were these kind of problems during the, the course of the game. No, it was But when it ended, I mean, it just broke loose. It certainly did. You're right. That's a good point, you know. Through the play of the game, there was not really any uh, stoppage or any threats, no it personal didn't. fouls at all. Very cleanly played game. No, we didn't see any late hits or any uh, shows of temper at all. But when this game ended, it just really broke loose, and it looked from here as though Marlboro County had instigated this thing. I, it looked like Marlboro County was, uh, was the one throwing the punches down there, and I don't know... Again, what it was about, but I imagine there's going to be some repercussions out of uh, what happened here at the end of this game. Well, Northwestern wins at 14 to 10, and Northwestern next week will be at uh, East Mech. And we will have Rock Hill and York back here at District 3, and hopefully we can get the field cleared by uh, next Friday night. Yeah, and, and I think he's really hit the nail on the head. I mean, it was a great game, just what you'd like to see in high school football, but what occurred here... Immediately after the gun sound, it was just well, uh, horrendous. Somebody's being arrested down there, uh, being handcuffed. Now, that's not anybody in uniform, so... A Marlboro County fan, and he was warned. I watched him as well. He was warned a few times, would not leave the scene, and finally is being arrested. Well, again, our final 14 to 10 Northwestern, so uh, let's get out of here. We'll talk to you next week with uh, York and Rock Hill. Uh, for Jim Marino, this is Jeff Singer. Have a good night, everybody. We'll talk to you next week. Chatter is your local. Welcome back to this Monday edition of CN2 Sports. A lot to get you caught up on from the weekend, so let's not dilly-daddle around. It was supposed to be a clash of the Titans, but it turned into a mob scene. A great game between Northwestern and Marlboro County is being overshadowed by a full field fight that took place shortly after the last play of the game. Let's first show you the highlights. First quarter, no score. Savelle Newton, the best quarterback in the state, not on this play. C.J. Barber with the interception. He stepped out of bounds at about the two. Same drive, first play of the second quarter. It's Jonathan Williams from two yards out. Trojans up 7-0. Third quarter, score tied at 7. Bobo Thompson rolls right and finds Barrett Metters for the score. Northwestern back up by 7. Bulldogs now with the ball. Good pressure on Newton, and that'll force him to throw it up. And there's Barber again, his second interception of the game, but maybe tries to do a little too much on the return. Coughs it up. Marlboro County recovers. That led to a field goal, 14-10. Trojans at that point. Same score. Final play of the game. Newton needs the end zone, but good coverage by the Trojans. Northwestern hangs on to beat the Bulldogs 14-10, but that was just the beginning of the fireworks that erupted on the field. It starts out as nothing, but then emotions, tempers, whatever you want to call it, boil over, and you just hate to see this in a high school game. It's not known at this time exactly how or who started the chaos. Fights erupted all over the field. There are reports that at least four players were maced. Northwestern assistant coach Bobby Carroll says he was slugged by a Bulldog player. Carroll was icing his eye after the melee. It took several minutes to get everything under control. Rock Hill Police spent today meeting with coaches and officials from both schools, as well as reviewing several tapes of the incident to see if any charges will be filed. We've uh, just been trying to collect the evidence and see exactly what we have, uh, who was involved, 
and if there will be any charges, and if so, who will be charged with what. Uh, we met today for about three hours again with uh, Chief of Police from Bennettsville, uh, the, the head coach from Marlboro County, uh, Coach Moose Wallace from uh, Northwestern and Dr. Bill Gummerson, along with uh, our local solicitor's office. We again reviewed about seven different videotapes. And uh, at this point in time, we've not interviewed any players. We're just talking with the coaching staff and school officials trying to get a better handle on which direction we may go with this investigation. As of this afternoon, there are no charges or suspensions. There are three different investigations into Friday's fight. Law enforcement agents are handling the criminal investigation. School officials are conducting their own investigation, as is the South Carolina Athletic League. More high school football. Indian Land host. 15 to 10 victory over Marlboro County. As the game ended, benches cleared and fans rushed onto the field. Two Rock Hill police officers and a coach for Northwestern were hurt. All were treated and released from the hospital.